What is up, party people? Welcome to HVAC Uncensored Podcast. I am your host, Gil KV Jr. Guys, I got a good show tonight, man. It was um, kind of unplanned, but uh, I am so excited and so happy for it. Um, I had a very awesome guest uh, planned tonight that will reschedule. He had to do something with his son. I, I get it. Things pop up. Um, but... Um, I have two awesome guests tonight that I'm going to hurry up and get to. So let's get these beginning things rolling so we can get into the meat and potatoes. Um, guys, first and foremost, I want to thank all the sponsors who help make this podcast possible. First and foremost, are going to be my friends over at Yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket is coming out strong and a, making a wave with their new wireless technology. They are the only manufacturer that makes a wireless dual port manometer. Um, their new stuff, I think they're a little late to the party, but God damn it, it is awesome. If you have not checked out um, Yellow Jacket's new stuff, please, please check it out. It is amazing. They've done an awesome job. The connectivity is amazing. I'm going to be doing some videos, testing it out so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Remember, seven years of expertise built into every tool. Next, a brief moment is going to be my friends over at Schedule Engine. All you business owners out there, if you're looking to simplify things in your business, um, if people cannot book online, if you're looking for an answering service, um, Schedule Engine is your that's what you need. Um, my buddy Addison over there, reach out to me. I can get you in touch with who you need to be in touch with. Um, schedule engine offers so people can book directly from your website, saves all the CSR, some of the headaches from having to answer, answer some of those stupid, boring calls that the ones that they're wasting time on the good ones. Uh, also, they have a 24 hour chat where somebody can help them. These people are trained in HVAC to answer the questions. Um, so if you're a smaller, mid sized company, I definitely suggest you check out schedule engine. All right, enough paying the bills. Let's do a little uh, pledge of allegiance and get moving here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States, and thank you to all those men and women who defend it. industry, then you're in the right spot. Blue collar people talking about blue collar shit. Let's get better together. So turn up the volume, buckle your seatbelt, and let's welcome your host, Gil KV Jr. Alrighty, enough of all that stuff. Oh, somebody's got it playing in the background. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get over to these guests, guest man. Um, we have my good friend, Mr. Everett Lippel, who is the, um, is that, that is how you say it? Lippel, right? Your last name? No, sir. Lapel. It's Lip. It's lapel. That's okay. Okay. I, no, cause I always, I, I, didn't interesting... wa- I didn't want to say it wrong, man. So I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, we just hang out, but I can't say his last name right. If most of you, if you don't know Everett, he is, I'll let him tell you, the national sales director um, for Supply Smart. And he is also um, a consultant for the hit um, CRM that's out, Sarah. Uh, and real fast, you guys know Mr. Tersh Blissett. He is the host of the Service Business Mastery podcast, owns several business. Both of these guys are very good friends of mine. I love them to death. I appreciate you guys for coming on. We are going to chat a little bit about the AHR Expo, and then I'm going to take this off into a deep dive. So we'll see how it uh, how it goes. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. Thanks, Gil. Thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, of course, man. I know um, we might be having some... Let me just, uh, real, real, uh, I got a couple, I don't know. Have you guys seen Facebook? Are we, uh, cause I'm looking at the YouTube side. Um, it's all good. It's not a big deal, but, uh, real fast. Um, miss Jessica Egan. Oh my God. John Israel's in here. Um, 
That's funny. I didn't know you were still alive, dude. Um, anyway, uh, Miss Jessica Egan, Clint, uh, what's up, Mr. Clint? Let's see who we got in here. Mr. Hughes, man. What's up, Ryan? How you doing, buddy? And I can't see the Facebook one yet, but anyway. <laughs> you good there, Terrence? Can you hear us, my friend? Oh, hold on. There you are, Tersh. I, I muted you. Sir, you, you try, you're trying to censor me? Yeah, I'm censoring you. Man. <laughs> I thought this was the uncensored <laughs> podcast. It, it, it is. It is very uncensored. We, we say the F word a lot around here. <laughs> but um, I, I guess we'll start, man. We'll get into it. So we won't beat a dead horse. I know everybody is talking about, you know, AHR, but it, it is a, a hot thing. I know you guys talked about today on your show, Tersh. Um, I agree that I think it the numbers were down from Orlando I, I agree it wasn't as many people it was an awesome time as far as podcasting I think it was awesome what they did for us um, oh, yeah. as far as us actually being in the event now and not outside was huge because people walked in I know the one that you did you had a huge crowd um, my one with Rector Seal not to be you got the good Rector Seal uh, interview mine the guy was <laughs> the guy was a very nice guy I just couldn't get anything out of him um, but the one I did about mental health and, and uh, addiction with Miss Stacy for that crowd was huge I was like yeah damn like that's 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 pretty awesome so it was awesome what nicole bush and them do for us but um yeah absolutely i'll, I'll let you go first uh tersh so overall what did you think about ahr um i know you're saying it for the third fourth time now but <laughs> no nah, it's it really was a great time and i loved being able to see everybody i mean we talk to people constantly here um virtually and to be able to actually come and hang out with each other uh, face to face, that's that was really uh, that's really awesome. It's always awesome to do that. Uh, and you're right, Nicole and the whole team over at AHR Expo, they really do a jam up job uh, with everything. And uh, huge shout out to Jessica also and all the crew over there at HVAC School. They, they always bring a bring an awesome show together, too. Yeah, they do. I, I, I'm sorry for not being able to make it over, Jessica. She took uh, us and Everett and some other people out to dinner the first night. Um, well, HVAC school did. Uh, and it was a good time. To be honest, I was probably one of the best dinners that I had there. It was better than the raw stuff I was eating with uh, Everett the second night. <laughs> I thought I liked sushi, but apparently I'm one of those like pussy sushi eaters. I like the, the half cooked stuff. <laughs> the California roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he handed me the he handed me the menu basically and was like, uh just um I don't know, uh order from me. He literally said he's like, I go out to eat with I go out to eat with people like, you know, near near where he lives, and he's like, and I just like I just get what they get. So I I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's that there, we always get sushi around us and like um, it's good. They have one. It's like this shrimp stuff, like spicy shrimp. That's like really, really good. And I destroy it. So I've never really had different things. Although I will say the stuff I got was good. I, I, I was down with that. Um, so I can't. And it also didn't help that somebody gave me a few gummies and I was um, uh -oh. three sheets to the wind, man. I was uh, <laughs> ever, ever didn't know. But we um, we were walking outside and I said something ever. It was like, I fucking knew it. He was like, I knew it. I was looking at you. And you're like, dude, I, I was like, no wonder. <laughs> wonder i was like oh my gosh yeah it was fun yeah, yeah it was fun and then uh chris was there what's chris well uh, chris chris has a pretty badass uh youtube channel man that guy yeah. is i'm actually wearing his hat right now yeah super super cool cat man I, I love and that was one thing about and i i talked earlier about this about the presence of the commercial world in HVAC came out guns a blazing at this thing. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that, that that's all they do. And I remember like me and Chris were talking about, I remember when he said he was first going to start a YouTube channel um, and message me to uh, uh, message me to um, uh, 
Ask, I thought I heard something in here. Uh, message me, it's like ask me, like what equipment and stuff to get, and um, and to see where he is now, it's like it, it's amazing. It just shows what putting in the work and being consistent can do. I mean, and that's what yeah. he's done. And it also it helps sure. that he's a very smart dude, you know. And he's he's good looking too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he does not have. Wolf Fang loafers. <laughs> nope. No. Oh, well, I said it earlier in the thing. I said in my mind, every time I see Tersh at these events, sharp dressed man from ZZ Top plays in my head. Like he comes that's walking hilarious. in, it's like every girl's crazy, man. <laughs> um, so that's like his theme song when he walks in. Although I gotta <laughs> say, man, I know Everett's got some some pipes. That um, I know he does his singing. We were at that piano bar the one night, and um, I could hear him singing in the background, even though I was slugging Coronas like there were water. I wanted to get up there so badly and that dueling pianos place was actually, that was, that was a lot of, that was a lot of fun. It, it was, it was a good time. Um, so I know we're talking more about the after parties, but you know what, but that is part of it though. Like I, and to be honest, like, you know, Terrace, you guys do a good job of like setting up your podcast when you go and setting up different guests. I kind of wing it when I go. I'm not going to lie because, you know, <laughs> the, the hell in, in Orlando, when we went, I was like, Tersh, I, I've never done this before. I just the first time here. I was like, can you be my first guest? Cause I don't have anybody. <laughs> um, because I, it's always so like, you know, you have to do your sponsor obligations, um, which I get it. You know, they're, they're paying for that. That's the relationship you've built with them. Um, but I, I like to just meet people and do random ones because, you know, some people don't show up and, and yada, yada, yada. Um, so that's the main reason that I, that I didn't, but I, I love doing that, but I like going there to network, to meet everybody, to hang out. You know, sometimes that's the only time we get to see each other. Granted, we saw each other in, well, both of us saw each other in, um, Louisville, but you know, sometimes these yeah. are events are the only time we ever get to see each other. Yeah, for the whole year. Yeah. So you try to enjoy it. And your time is so so busy that, you know, we would see each other at the event, but we didn't get to hang out after the event. Nope. Not like we have in the past, anyways. Yeah. Um, the only thing I am glad it's earlier this year, uh, or no, um, that it's not the Super Bowl, because I know Orlando, the night that we I got in was Super Bowl Sunday. Really? Yeah. When we were at Orlando, it was, was the that, same. It was last weekend in January. Yeah. It, Cause it was, I remember it was down there. Cause I remember the first night I met you at the bar by your hotel. When I first met HVAC mm -hmm. jerks and that's when Kansas city won the super bowl. Um, and I remember watching it my first night there. I don't know about all that. I don't watch football. Pro bowl. Yeah. I lost money this time if the fucking Chiefs would have won <laughs> and Chiefs and Rams, I would have won 2,500 bucks in Vegas. You got to bet. Uh, but since the Rams won, I only won 750. So on a $500 bet. So I'll take it. Dude, I didn't spend one penny on gambling the past two times I've been to Vegas. That was my first time to Vegas. I know well, you said you've been there and I know Everett's been there. What? Like six times this year. <laughs> <laughs> or within a Dude, year if i have to go if i have to go to another event in las vegas i'm like i'm so over it and 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 i get it like it's the sparkles and the big lights and everything like that but i mean it's just it's so much and um and i felt like it's it's like walking the strip like this is uncensored right so dude you're just like walking the strip and it's just like dude there's like i mean there's vagrants all over the place you're just stepping over people Weed everywhere. it's like <laughs> Or random people that? grab you and want to take pictures. Um, yeah. I was, yeah. I was what was that? I was getting whipped. Yeah, I, I got to send you these pictures, Tersh. Um, <laughs> we're walking down on the strip, going to the restaurant, and like I said, I'm a little loopy. Um, and these this woman grabs my hand and she's like, "Take a picture, sexy." I'm like, "Yeah, what's up? What's ever, whatever, girl." You know. So I got two of them on the side. The one I was debating whether she had a penis or not. I'm not sure, but. Um, <laughs> I took a picture, uh, HVAC rookie took the picture. Then she's like, one more, one more. And she had me get down on a knee. I'm like, okay. Um, uh -huh. and they're like whipping me. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then when I got up, they were like, oh, well we got $50 each last time to take a picture. I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here. And the bitch was holding oh, yeah. my hand hard. 
So I, I gave him forty dollars each. Just leave me alone. I was like, here, just take it. Go away. <laughs> oh, you gave man. away your winnings. Yeah, I was like, just just leave me alone. Just go away. So what yeah, was funny get you. about that? They get you for that. So yeah, I just walked past them. No, I, nobody wants to take no picture with me. If you if you try to take a picture with me, it's a con. So <laughs> I'm gonna keep walking. I should have. You're talking about church. Everybody at AHR wanted to take a picture with you. Everybody. If like you were just walking up to you guys. Both of you guys, you guys are like, you guys, and I'll tell you what, from it, from, from a non podcaster perspective and watching you guys like walk through there, like it's amazing how much the podcasting world has influenced our industry. So if we're going to talk about AHR, like front and foremost, walking into the door, you had the podcast pavilion right there. You had a constant barrage of guests. You had industry leaders. Ken Goodrich rolls up. And like immediately gets on a podcast with you, Tersh, right? Like, so it just was chilling. like, it was, it was crazy to see how much the podcasting world influence, influences this industry to a point where now it, 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 they set up an entire exhibit, like a whole like podium and everything at this event, which is just a testament to what you guys are trailblazing, you know, through this industry super, super cool. You guys should actually be like super proud of yourselves. And I know, um, Tersh, you guys had that tactical awards dinner, um, with the, you know, the awards and everything the night before. Yeah, so yeah, that was Gil really was cool. I, I didn't get to go. I really, I really wanted to go. Um, I didn't get to go, I, I, <laughs> but it, it looked like you guys Next had a good year. time. Next year you'll be there. Yeah, I tried to because I know he ever wasn't going until kind of towards the the last second. Um, and I tried to get him a ticket, but it was it, it was too late. It, it was definitely that was a packed a, house. It, it was it was a packed house. I I will say the HV. Well, first before we get onto that, what you just said, I appreciate that. But what a lot of people don't realize, and I told Tersh this, and I know he won't take the credit, is a lot of us pod. Well, the fact that we podcast at AHR is because of Tersh. Tersh was going to these events. It, it is though, man. And I know you won't take the credit, but Tersh was going to these events, wheeling stuff around, going to booths, became, you know, good friends, had a relationship with Nicole, Nicole Bush from AHR. And that's what made this grow into it. So I have the privilege of doing what I do because of you, man. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah, man. It's my pleasure. I mean, we really, it, it was awkward as hell the first year. Cause I was just like toting around a camera and like, Hey, can I record you? And, and all this other stuff. Um, but yeah, and then I got in, I got in with Nicole and I was like, Oh, am I going to get in trouble for this? And she's <laughs> like, no, I, I want you to set this thing up. Let's do this thing big. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Just do wait, it. wait till some of these other events start doing the same thing. Yeah, there's a couple other events that have kind of called on to it. The EGIA event um, that um, Epic 2021 um, that was in Vegas last year. We had a, a podcast, uh, like a, a row, podcast row or media row is what they called it. Um, and they're going to do it. They're going to do it big again this upcoming year. So uh, several of them, ACA is the same way. They're doing the same thing. So. Well, let me know, man, because I want to start getting to more of these events and doing doing more of it. So um, that's that's awesome. Yeah, th this year was was pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, you got the, the, the 10 X HVAC event coming up in March. Oh, yeah. I have to email those people back since you since you interviewed them, because remember, we talked about we both got an email and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to answer that one. Um, <laughs> and then I saw yeah. that your podcast with him was awesome. And I was like, fuck, I probably should have. Uh, probably should have answered <laughs> It was that a one. good interview, but actually, uh, Julie's the one that set that up at the event. She uh, the person that sent us the emails, they didn't he didn't even work there anymore by the time the event happened. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're. It was awesome. Can you talk more about that, guys? I, I'm really curious because, like, I got a mess. I got a, a call from Cardone Ventures about something, and I'm I'm curious. Like, talk about that because obviously, I think there's a lot of people that are going to listen to this and they're going to say, "Okay, so 10x event, Cardone Ventures, like Grant Cardone," and maybe they're not aware because obviously Victor had um, had Grant Cardone at his event and they're moving into the industry. And I would like to know a little bit more about like what their angle is. Are they looking at it from more like just a VC perspective? Um, talk. Go ahead, Tersh. 
Well, the way that it's explained to me, and I actually just listened to the show like four times editing it just now uh, before getting on here. So uh, the way that it was explained is they have like three different tiers of, of levels of how they're going to be helpful to the industry. Uh, the first one is going to be to just merely provide support and just uh you can go to these events like the 10x hvac event uh the next one is going to be to actually subscribe to a, like coaching co- classes with them coaching courses on how to market and how to grow your your business 10x and everything uh and then the third way is going to be a a, a partnership and with that partnership it's a um it's a 30 percent buyout so you still own 70% of the business. Uh, they're going to do, they're basically going to partner with a thousand businesses over the next three years. Um, and if they, once they like, it's a, it is an interview process. And if you go through the whole interview process and, and either one of you doesn't want to be, you know, go through with it, then, um, it, you can just back off and just keep coach using the coaching program or just coach the classes here and there or, or whatever you want to do. And then, um, at the end of the five year, it's a five year thing they want to do. They want to have a thousand businesses doing 25 million each, um, at the end of the five year mark. So, and they're going to, they're, 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 they're only going to own 30% of the business. So the, the original owner will still continue to own 70% of it. I'm sure there's going to be some nuances there about buyouts and stuff like that. But so, yeah. uh, let, let me ask you something. Did you, have you talked to anybody from some of these practices groups? Have you talked to anybody from CEO warrior? Have you talked to anybody from Nexar from SGI, um, and, and gotten their feedback on this? A little bit, not a whole lot because it's, it was just last week. So obviously I'll, I'll definitely talk with people, do due, due diligence and everything like that. Um, I've talked to a couple of other coaches that were, they're like smaller. I say smaller, but they're more of a, uh, what do you say? A la carte coaches. They, they're they like more one-on-one. They don't, they don't take on 200 businesses like your next star and, and uh, CEO warrior and stuff like that. Um, and they were talking about like, Early on, it's probably going to be good uh, towards the end. Once it's time for the exit strategies and the VCs, that's probably when you want, want, kind of want to exit that that whole thought process. But um, honestly, the people that I've spoken with, they've said if it helps the industry, they're all for it. Uh, now, if they come in and they're to they're here to to uh, Shark Tank them and take them out, take out take out all the business from underneath the people. Like that's a whole different story. Um, but from the way it sounds to those individuals from a very short, like not, no deep dives, but just surface level interview, it seemed like they were genuinely trying to help the industry. That's what I worry about though. Like I said, that I think that everybody comes in with the right intentions until, I mean, People know that there's money in our industry. Uh, Like I said on on your show in the comments earlier, they know that they can't automate us. They can't replace us. So now they want to dip their hands into it. Um, and, And I know that some people, they are technicians. They're not good business owners. They need that, you know, that hand act of God to come in for their business to be successful. I get that. Um, I just don't want, and I'm not going to name drop people here, but I don't want some things that, like some other guys have done and the little, the little guy not understanding what they're doing and getting fucked out of a business that to them was going to be their legacy for their family or their whatever. And they don't realize what they're signing because they don't know the fine print. And then bam, now, now you just got screwed out. There's not a damn thing. Cause what are you going to go to court? They got more money than you. <laughs> One of the things that I would caution people with like um, Patrick Lang. I mean, he's a, he's a genuinely honest dude and great friend of mine. And he is more than happy to look at something and, and be like, Oh yeah, that's, that does not look right. Or that does look right. Um, the, the Brandon Dawson, the, the business partner for Grant Cardone, one of the things that he mentioned was the fact that he got screwed out of a deal from a, a VC company. And ever since then, it's been his mission to make sure that that doesn't happen to other small businesses. Whether he's telling the truth or not, I don't know, but he seemed genuine. Uh, and I want to believe him. Um, obviously, 
I, I like to see the best in everybody too. So I, I almost to a fault sometimes. Uh, so sometimes I, uh, I love on people that I probably shouldn't just because of that. I just want to see the best in everybody's, uh, nature. And, uh, I've, I've surely been taken advantage of by doing that. Even people here locally that I thought were, were cool friends and turns out they're snakes in the grass. So. Tersh, I, so this really sparks a nerve with me because Like, I think that uh, I think about a situation where I was a partner in a business back in Jersey and I took on, I come with, you know, unique talents, the ability to grow a business. I understand the business from a sales perspective, from an operations perspective. And I came in with all these talents and I had some money behind me and I took on a partner. And um, I mean, the guy you're talking about snakes. I mean, the dude literally like uprooted like over a hundred grand, uh, you know, right out of my back pocket. Like now I'm trying to think to myself, like, holy shit, am I going to lose my house? Like, am yeah. I going to like, what is going on here? So, you know, when I think about, and I, and I get it, there's a larger organizations, but when there's now money in play and you start talking about businesses that are largely operated in a mom and pop sort of fashion, like, I would definitely say it's getting a lot more sophisticated. There's a lot more money in the industry. I think you got to be super careful with who you're getting into bed with and who you're partnering up with and making sure that whoever you're partnering up with and whoever's listening to this, I'd say, you know, listen, that PE is going to come now. Listen, the lid's off guys, the lid's off, like the money's out there. Investors were creeping and crawling all through, all throughout this place. I mean, they're like, I've been talking to more people who are like sniffing around for, for acquisitions then I've like, it's incredible, right? Uh, I would just say, and I'm sure you guys agree with me on this. I'd say whoever you partner up with, just make sure, you know, it's a sound deal. There's companies out there that that's what they specialize in, in acquiring home services businesses, and they understand the business. And those seem to me to be a little bit more synergistic for, for an owner. But if you're, yeah, look, does the Cardone Ventures, do they know what they're doing and how to build a business? <laughs> yeah, of course they do. Of course they do. Um, Anyway, rant, rant over. <laughs> You're right though. And I interviewed a couple, a guy a couple of months back. Oh, it's probably been almost a year ago now that I interviewed him. His only job is to go in and make sure that you're taken care of and your assets are covered and everything is covered when you do get into a partnership or you start going through a VC uh, acquisition um, or even just selling out completely. And he, he, like you pay him, I mean, you might pay him $15,000, $20,000, but imagine how much he could save you if you, you, you were going to potentially get into a really bad partnership or VC uh, issue. And I like Patrick, by the way, Patrick is a, is an, I've every interaction I've had with Patrick, like an upstanding dude. And I've seen, he just posted something. He just sold a business somewhere, Baltimore, maybe. I think it was Baltimore. Oh yeah. He's selling shit in my backyard. <laughs> I didn't he authorize this. Wave. Yeah. <laughs> I- I'm out with COVID. I'm going to go back and be like, yeah, here's your shit, Gil. Um, <laughs> no, man, I, I know. Um, and I won't say any names, but I know Ryan has had plenty of offers to sell it already. Oh, yeah. And he's, he said, no, thank God. Um, cause I know that we have a really, um, a really good thing going that it's, it's really going to be, be something. So, but then again, that is, that is his decision. You know what I mean? So if that was to happen, then it is what it is. But you know, the one, the, the talk about the AHR, the one thing that I missed there, and obviously I didn't walk around a lot. Um, so I, I didn't really miss it that much because we literally, I think I did 18 interviews throughout the, the three days, but, um, the lack of, um, software companies like in the past, they were like rows and rows of software companies and they just weren't there this year. No, I, I have, I have sort of an inside scoop on this too. And I'm I, here's, so yeah, come on consult. It was, it, it was a, no, it, it was a no, So it was a noisy space. If you noticed, Sarah was not there. Sarah nope. was not there. So, um, and, and that was, you know, that was sort of by design right now. The biggest, the biggest thing is, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> you know, we have, we're onboarding so many people right now. So it's, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, you, you got that kind of, you, you grow, you grow and you, you, you grow smart. Right. Um, but I did notice that I did notice that there was definitely a lack of software companies and it's sort of, I think, I think it was a noisy space. And honestly, I think what's happened is a lot of these bigger players 
have just come in and just like dominated. Like you have like where you had all these different software platforms and now these bigger players have come in and you got to have guys like, you know, like Billy Stevens, man. I mean, he's super brave coming into this space and, and just crushing it. So I think, yeah, I think that goes a long way. Um, on the technology note, we, co- we covered this a little earlier. Um, Tersh, did you, uh, that smart AC company, I thought that that was, yeah, I, Googled I, I don't know if you looked after we talked. Yeah. One of their people commented so, in your thing about it saying, said thank you to you about, so I guess his name was Brian or something like that. Oh, in I didn't what, see in that my, comment. In my, in my video? Yeah. In your podcast, he commented saying, thank you, Everett. I appreciate you giving the shout out. Oh, I'll have oh, to check that well, out. Well, you know, dude, I went to visit. So Supply Smart was there to look at like all the different uh, manufacturers and all the different uh, types of innovation in the industry. And we've got stuff we're looking at. We talked about uh, the Mega Press before. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and there's like a bunch of innovations, a lot of IAQ stuff. Like the, now that the IAQ, you want to talk about noise. I mean, that is such a noisy space right now. It's almost impossible to make heads or tails. And I, I think the dust is going to settle and half these guys are going to be they're not going to be a business. <laughs> you no. Know, and and um, we'll talk about that again too. Real fast before I forget, um, Mr. Uh, Mike Mayberry, HVAC reefer guy in the house on YouTube. What's, what's up, up Mike? Mike? Yeah. O- awesome dude. I, Mike, I know we've missed each other, man, but I would love to do a podcast with you brother and actually be able to sit down and talk with you for a, um, a, a decent while. But, um, I also think after going to service, world and going to HR, I think service world like that is more for like business owners, managers. So the software companies, it makes sense to be there because the decision makers are there. HR is a lot for technicians, you know? So why are you going to manufacturers? Like, yeah. So what's the point of being there? Like schedule engine was there. They're a sponsor of mine. I tried to find them. They must've been like, in the parking lot because I don't know where they were. I tried to find them and could not find them. Schedule engine. Uh, were they over by podium in them? Cause I know that podium and, and them, they were all in the other, even in the other building. Yeah. I went over there and I, I don't know, maybe, well, that was the same with HVAC school. We, me and uh, Scott HVAC rookie went to see Jessica and we I got one of the little books, like a dipshit. And I'm like, B645. Okay. Um, HVAC and school was where we were located all the way in the back corner away from where we were like the farthest you could get away from us is where HAC school was. Yeah. I ended up finding them. Um, but the number, if you go by the numbers, you'd have got lost because I was like, <laughs> it's uh, too massive. It, it's too big. It's too big. The, I mean, I mean, I love it. It was great. There was a lot of stuff there, but like I could, I, I think I basically maybe made it to half. I was there for whatever amount of days. I went to like half the vendors that I really wanted to go see because there's just not enough time in the day. And what's funny is I'm going to QSC. You really have to plan it out ahead of time. Like, and what we are all leading out of this is all day, every day, they're, they're having training classes also. Yeah. Breakout sessions. They have breakout sessions where like Daniel putting them from, uh, um, new flat rate. She was teaching on hiring people and, and like their co- courses for business owners all day long in that's, the upstairs part of it. That's one thing that I like about service world where they kind of force you to go to the breakout sessions because you have that one main meeting breakout sessions, and then they open the, the expo. Um, it's also different. That's I wasn't a huge fan of service world, to be honest, but it, it was a good time. Um, I like HR a lot better. I guess that's just the tech in me. But a lot of people don't know, too, if you download the app for HR, it will give you the layout so that you can try to plan before you go. Maybe some things are changed, but for the most part, you can plan your trip before you even go. Um, you know, highlight booths or where you want to go and it gives you a little path. So they have done wonders with that app. And I think a lot of people don't even know about it. I didn't, um, you know, I didn't know about it until it was too late. Was there anything you guys saw that you, uh, cause I know you did, I, Tersh, I mean, you were interviewing people all day long. Um, and, uh, but, uh, but was there anything that you guys saw that was like, okay, this is like, 
next level. This is this is going to be this is going to be big. This is going to be huge. Mm. <laughs> I guess not. N- nothing that nothing that I didn't already know about. Like there's a few things that I kind of already knew about. Um, I'll tell you there was a there was a lot of controversy around um, uh, Carhartt. And I I went to their booth and interviewed them and they have a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline for uh, the contractors and the uniform space, uh, which is pretty cool. And they have some some big announcements that are coming out here shortly also. Yeah, I I talked to them because we use our guys. We have all car uniforms, Uh, the shirts, pants, um, everything. Um, so that, that was pretty cool. Um, I was glad to finally be able to meet, I know you've already talked to them, uh, the women in HVACR, um, that, that was, so I, what those women are doing, they are some badass women. Um, I have a couple of them that are going to be coming up as guests on the podcast. Um, I can't wait to talk with them. What they're doing for the industry is, is, is pr- pretty amazing. And when you talk to these ladies, like they're, they're some powerful women. It's not just like, um, it's not just about technicians, women being technicians, which are awesome. Like we have Miss Jessica Egan. Um, I remember when she started doing this, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, but it it was awesome to to fi- finally meet them for sure. Uh, Mike, so, Mike Mayberry mentioned the the tactical uh, award show, and we mentioned it earlier. That's oh, yeah. definitely Ben Ben and uh, and all those guys. They did a great job with here. That. I'm I'm gonna um I think it's messed up. I'm gonna full screen me real fast. Guys, this is the bag that we all got. So this is all the sponsors. So shout out to all the sponsors. I permit, uh, Infro Air, HVAC Air Trap, Women in HVACR, Podium, uh, Subco Trade Fox, Solder Weld, um, HVAC Tactical, and then the awards patch. Um, and obviously HVAC Tactical, Ben Poole and uh, Mr. Lance from Solder Weld are the two big ones who really made this possible. Uh, but this bag came with a T-shirt, all kind of stuff. And this is a sweet fucking bag, man. I mean, it's it's really sweet. That was um, I think that is definitely a, a, a groundbreaking event. We we all know that sales you have to have sales in the industry that kind of makes the, you know, these big companies grow. We have to have it. Um, you know, I, I've been good at sales and done sales. Everett has, you know, owning a business, Tersh has to do it. Uh, there's no way around it. And, but I feel like the technicians kind of get the brunt end of that though. And there's never anything like that for them. And for Ben to do this, um, I, I know that this thing is going to, this year, you want to say what, there was me, what, like 50, 60 people? I think it was, I, I, I could be wrong, but I feel like there was like 80 people there. I, if, you, I, if I heard correctly. You might be right. Okay. So say it was, a, it was a packed house. That's for sure. Yeah. So say 80, 100 people. I think next year is going to be like four or 500. Like, I, I definitely think it's going to grow that much. I could see that. I could see that for sure. Yeah, because I know they have more sponsors that want to get involved in it. And um, I think a lot more people are going to see and want to come and like accept their award in person and and that kind of stuff. So it was definitely, definitely awesome. So congratulations. What to other all kind the of awards? What other kind of awards did they give out at, at the tactical awards? So some of them were a little a little I don't remember some of them. I know one was like the achievement award of the year, right? Isn't that the one? Cause I forget them. Cause I know some people who won, but Mr. HVAC reefer guy, Mike won one. That was important. That was the last award. Yeah. He is the, he was the, um, Oh, what was it, Mike, that you were, uh, I want to say ambassador, but I don't think that's right. Uh, I presented the, um, the tech support award. So the guy that you, the guy that you reach out to when you're, when you've been on the job site and you need hands, like you need a help, um, then like you just, the, the one person that you can always reach out to and they can, they'll help you out. Uh, and so that was, that was a cool, cool award to be able to give away. Uh, yeah, they had the clean, the clean van award, uh, to the technician that's always super clean, clean install award. Um, and that definitely went to Jeff, uh, J Dem or whatever his name yeah. Um, and, uh, th- that was, uh, what was it that, that Ben made for him? 
Uh, oh, the strut necklace. They call him the strut. Yeah. yeah. His, his, his installs strut. do look pretty fucking sweet though, man. When you, when you look at that, if you look up J Dem, um, HVAC on Instagram, his installs are, oh yeah, that's what Mike got lifetime achievement award. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah lifetime achievement award. I, I knew it was something like that. I just, I know who won the awards. I just forgot the name of some of the awards. So congratulations, Mike, you deserve that. My man, like I said, in my post to you, um, what you do for the industry is more important than you think it is my man. Um, but yeah. So I know a lot of the social media was a lot of Instagram um, people on there, but I, I will say, I think everybody who won an award 100% deserved it. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I'll I think be you honest. Got, I think you got, I think you got skimmed on the, uh, the nomination. Uh, you know, you know I mean, I mean, I've, I appreciate that, but you know what? I, I did take a lot of last year off. It's a good point. Good you, know, point. You, you know what I mean? So it's, it, yeah. it, it's all, it's all good. I mean, obviously the pride in me, what I've liked to have been up there. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have a big presence on Instagram. Um, you know, which is something I'm trying me to grow. Either. Yeah. I, I if, did. You, if you follow me on Instagram, there's a really strong possibility. You're going to see some kids playing soccer. <laughs> <laughs> this guy does a <laughs> podcast. Um, you know, so I, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, I took some time off between sickness and health issues and stuff like that. So it, it, it is what it is. Um, but I, I was happy and I'm, you know, and anybody that knows me, you know, you guys know that I am truly happy to see other people have success. So, um, whether it was you or Gary or the HVAC jerks, I was happy to see them win. I know those guys been busting their ass to, um, Oh yeah. Uh, he said, <laughs> uh, Mike said Gil should have, should have got the sexiest beard award. Yeah. Maybe before yeah. I don't have a beard <laughs> anymore, man. My beard's, uh, nothing. Gil, Gil, you were dressed to the tens, man. You cleaned up. Uh, I didn't even know it was you. <laughs> Thank you. He's looking sharp. That's for sure. And, and I like I it. Even know. <laughs> it's funny. So I, I like it. So Lance and, and Ben and them said in their little thing, Instagram live, they did that. It's going to be, um, a black tie event now. Like it's going to, they're going to do that. Um, and it was fun. So I walked to men's warehouse. I didn't know that it was, um, <laughs> even going to be dressed up until like, the last minute. And I was like, well, shit, I, I need to get me a tux. Um, and then I, I went to the local men's warehouse because I don't even know where my suits and shit are from when I moved. Um, that's how much I wear them. And, uh, the guy was like, dude, the best I can do. Um, he's like, I can probably have it there for you in Vegas to pick up. I'm like, all right, well, that's even better. I don't got to travel with it. Like, cool. Yeah. Um, you ain't got to iron it or nothing. Yeah. So it says it's like 1.9 miles away from the hotel. I'm like, fuck it. I need a little, you know, breather. I got time to waste. I'll just walk there. And I'm looking at the strip. First of all, my, my, my Google app couldn't fucking pay attention. So it was saying I was facing this way, but going this way. So I'm walking around Dude, like Google was so confused the whole time I was there. Yeah. I walked around my <laughs> hotel like six times before I finally went in the right fucking direction. But then I'm walking and I'm like, I'm not on the strip anymore. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm, I'm like, I'm from Baltimore. So I'm definitely in the hood. Uh, you know, I'm like, I got a couple of thousand dollars of the camera gear in my bag. And I'm going to fucking disappear. So I'm doing that like little walk, skip turn. So you can see what's behind you. You know what I mean? Like making sure nobody's creeping up on me and shit. <laughs> it was fun. Constantly grabbing for a pocket knife. Yeah, like exactly. I'm like, shit, I knew I should have brought that. What's up, Cannon? I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Um, yeah, but it, it, it Yo, was. So that reminds me. That reminds me. We were coming out. We were going to dinner, right, Tersh? And we're looking out. And I look on the Google map, and I'm like, okay, I know where this place is. I know where this place is. We can get there. <laughs> we can get there, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So we walk out. There's this section, like it's a piazza, right? It's a piazza, and it comes and it faces the strip, right? And it's right in between like Link and I think the Flamingo. And so, and so I'm like, follow me guys. And this is where all the pictures are happening and we're getting whipped in the streets and walking over vagrants and everything else. We walk down and we walk all the way up the little crosswalk thing to go over the strip and then back down to hit Caesars. And then I'm looking at my map and we turned the other direction and we finally get to the restaurant. I look across the street, directly across the street. 
And it's exactly where we started, except across the street. We literally went in like a one mile U to get back to where we had to go. And I was like, guys, I'm so sorry. And those guys were so tanked. Those guys were so tanked. They had no idea. Anyway, they were like, nah, okay. It was a walk. Dude, that was, that was, was my cold. taxi driver. Every time I took a taxi somewhere, it was like, I'm going across the street. Why is it $17? Oh, because it took us five miles to get there because we we're driving all around your elbow to get to your asshole. Most of them. Yeah, they got restrictions. Yeah, most of them were pretty good, but some of them, like the last day, um, I wish a, a rookie, I wish Scott was in here because he, he'd say, um, we literally got picked up and the guy, the people took the same route to the convention center from the hotel every day. Well, this yeah. guy tried to be same slick. Same thing. You know, and I'm like, where the fuck is this dude going? And I was like, bro, you missed the turn. And he was like, dude, oh, every oh. single day, it was nine dollars to get from my hotel to the convention center every single day. And in the last day, this dude's driving all over the place. I'm like, where in the hell are you going? And it was like eighteen dollars before their little fees and everything else. And I was, he was like, uh, I didn't tip that some bitch. And he was like. What? No tip? I was like, no, nah, man, you're a scam artist. It's nine dollars to get here. Not the 15 plus your five dollar credit card fee. And then he only would allow me to put in their 35 percent tip. Like that was the lowest tip. I was like, what did you get? What did you do? Yeah, open bar or something like what's going on here? Like, no, nah, bro. Uh, Some of them, they're funny. They're crazy, man. They're. So when I walked to men's warehouse and I got the tux, I was like, yeah, obviously I was like, I'm fucking Uber and back. My Uber driver comes and he's like, you know, mellow, listening to Pink Floyd. And he's like, you got to stop by the dispensary, bro. I was like, no, nah, I'm good, man. He was like, yeah, I already went. I'm good too. He's like, all right, let's roll, bro. <laughs> he's like an older, like <laughs> Spanish guy. And he, he puts on, he's like, you like Pink Floyd? I'm like, yeah, bro, let's rock and roll. And he's just cruising. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm probably going to die, but this is a good time. Music's good. Um, he was funny. Dude, he was I should have hung out with you afterwards. Not one time in my life, my entire life, have I ever consumed cannabis. Ever. You know how wild of a night it would have been <laughs> if I would have been hanging out with you and eating gummy bears? That was well, no, dude. You would have ended up in your hotel room asleep. Yeah, so, yeah. So <laughs> that's that's exactly where I ended up. Yeah. So back in the day, you know, yeah, I was younger, was a pothead, and did stupid. Now that I'm older, I really don't. I have no inclination to want to smoke weed. Um, my wife likes it sometimes. It helps with her headaches, and she can unwind. I just don't like it. It, it hurts my lungs. Um, and those gummies. One of them actually would have been good because I have like the anxiety issues and, and one of them was fine. If I would have stopped at one, I would have been good. You know, it was the second and third one. That was the problem. And <laughs> I didn't, where to get you. I didn't eat yet. And then it was just, and to be honest, I, I would never, I was just say I wasn't fucked up, but I was pretty fucked up. I, there, there's, there's no denying that. I was, I was pretty fucked up. Um, yeah, we, we're sitting in that fancy restaurant and there, him and Chris Stevens are having conversations and I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Um, and, and I'm, just I, directed out. My con <laughs> I directed my conversation to Chris the whole night. That was like, I was fascinated, man, that he had a, he has a hundred thousand followers on, on there. Speaking of dinner, I'm actually going to dinner tonight uh, here and just like right now. And you, uh, just say you gotta go, man. with uh, Kath, Kathy Nielsen and, um, and, and Christian Dunwoody. Do you guys know Christian from Scorpion? I have, I have, I met him in, um, I don't know him. Oh, at EGIA? No, I met him in, in, in Kentucky. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah that's so what I meant. Kathy Not EGIA. Nielsen, the chicken, the chicken lady, she, her company is fantastic. What they do too. They come in, they do all the training. It's uh, and then they, they specialize in service Titan and optimizing service Titan and stuff like that. So 
Yeah, that's that's awesome. Jessica Egan says, why weren't we invited to these shenanigans? Um, it, it was kind of last minute, to be honest. We didn't know what we were going to do. We went to the the women's and HVACR event, um, which was it, it, it was it was a good time. But I need, I was around too many people and thought I was going to like. Bruh! So I was like, I was like, let's let's go, man. I need to go somewhere else. Um, that's how it all started. We all went to that event and then we decided to go have dinner afterwards and eat raw fish. Um, we, uh, so I interviewed, I interviewed Brandon Dawson from the Grant Cardone group, uh, right before the women at HVACR. And I thought it was going to be a great idea to just go straight from there. We went straight out to eat at, uh, this really nice restaurant. Um, and, uh, Justin, a buddy of ours, he, um, he invited us to go out there and we hung out with him and like just leaving that high, that euphoria high of just the conversation. And it was just like wide open conversation to eating dinner. And then it's like, man, I, I, I don't know that we're going to make it to the event for the women in HVACR. I mean, we tried, but it was just nonstop, just ideas just dropping everywhere. Like I had my notepad out just writing like during the middle of dinner, I have a $200 steak sitting there and I'm just like taking notes on my iPad nonstop. Like it's, it's just a table of like, I don't know, there was like eight of us and it, we were just all, everything that was coming in, it was like, this is crazy. All these wild ideas and stuff. So I just love that. It was, it's those things like they're worth it hundred percent just to hang out and, and get ideas from each other. Yeah, that, that, that is good. That's why, I, I mean, you know, I like meeting other business owners, managers, stuff like that, because I, I still try to grow and be better at what I do. I don't know everything. And, and some things you think, you know, when you meet people like that, or, or just people that are really good at something and they're like, Oh, I, I do ABCD. And you're like, you do what? I'm like, fuck, why didn't I think of that? And most of the time it's not even like, groundbreaking stuff. It's, it's, it's something you're like, why didn't I think of that? You know, yeah, um, little things. It's always the little things. Yeah. It's, um, if, if, if you got to go, buddy, I don't want you to be late. Yeah. Yeah. It was great it's hanging funny, out with man. you they're, like three times a day. They're, yeah. They're, te- they're texting, <laughs> they're texting. They're like, they're, yeah, they're, 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 uh, they're almost there. We're going to go get some, uh, we're gonna get some food here. Dude, there's a place here. That's fantastic. Next time you come in, you guys got to come out here. Yeah. So thanks for having me on and, uh, I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys. Yeah, of course, man. You know, you're always welcome to come on, man. I, I appreciate you. Um, and we'll, we'll do this again. Go enjoy your dinner, buddy. See you, bud. Oh, here. I got to make sure I take the Amanda name off. I forgot we, we were doing two people here. Um, oh, dang it. What are we doing? Why is Terrish not in there? I can't even hey, see. Hey, my name's Amanda now. Yeah, so I guess we're just going to stay th- two right here for right now until I get the other one figured out. Um one one thing, man, and I won't keep it too long, man, because I know you've been podcasting all day. Um, so obviously, AHR was a good time. Um, I will say real fast before we move on, if you did not go to um, the HVAC Tactical Award Show, check out Hughes Man HVAC, Ryan Hughes YouTube channel. He did a great job of capturing the event on his YouTube channel. So if you weren't there... Um, that is going to be your next best place to actually experience it um, in video. So good job, Ryan. You actually, you did a really good job with that video, bud. They did a live for a little bit, didn't they? Uh, they did. Um, so I, yeah, if you live stream, that's one thing, but I mean, he has I don't like, know where it was at though. Yeah. He has like the behind the scenes. Well, you were like, this in front of me. Um, and I think yeah, all the cameras right there by you. Yeah. <laughs> right behind you. Yeah. Yeah. People kept going to the fucking bar and like squeezing <laughs> through me. And I'm like, dude, like if I get fucking meat sauce on this goddamn tuxedo and I got to pay for it, like I'm going to beat somebody's ass. Let me see if I can, I don't know why this isn't working. Let's see what we got here. Baby. I just, when I, when I had to walk by you, I just squeezed by you and I just leaned on you as hard as I could. Yeah, you were fine, man. You were you weren't really a problem. It was 
There was just some uh, people. Jessica, J- Jessica asked if I'll be at a symposium. No, I actually will not be at a symposium. We had some drama going down at the business uh, at work here. And so uh, I have to stay in town. I actually bought four tickets for, for my, my team. Uh, I might send a couple of those guys down, but um, no, unfortunately, I will not be there. <laughs> Which sucks because I already paid for a, a room at the Animal House too, which is always a good time. Yeah, that does that does stink. There we go. That'll work. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, man, and I don't know if you guys have had this issue, is um, uh, no, Ryan, I don't use Streamyard. Uh. He, uh, Tersh does. I like StreamYard. I use Ecamm. I don't know why. I've just really liked it. And when I'm prepared and have it all set up, it's awesome. So normally if there's an issue, it's my fault, not Ecamm's. But, um, and I was going to do this podcast before I went to HR, but I didn't because of my daughter making me feel like a shitty father. But, um, <laughs> uh, and it, 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 like manufacturer malfunctions, man, because I feel like it doesn't matter what brand right now that there's a, like they're skipping the quality control quality process. Control. Yeah. They're yeah. trying to meet up with demand and like shit's coming out and like it's, it's dented and more like that. My installers are finding it. Um, parts are going bad on like new systems. Like I've had to replace some cause they're only like six months old and we've had like four or five issues. You know, have you, have you been having this and you don't got to name the brand cause it's not brand specific. Uh, Mm, yeah, no. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty tough on the the manufacturer. Whenever we start it up, when we go through our startup process, if it's if there's something that just doesn't seem right about it, I'll swap that equipment out. Even if I installed it already, like I'll I'll swap out the coil. I'll I'll have them order me a new air handler and swap the coil out if it's something goofy going on. Um. I've had a couple, I've had a couple coils leaking right afterwards, condenser coils. I'm trying to think I haven't had fingers crossed. I haven't had any evaporator coils leaking, but the evaporator coils for the manufacturer that we install, they're made like 20 minutes away from us. So, I mean, they still are on when they're on back order, they're still a pain in the ass to get their hands on, even though I could like go to the factory and pick them up. Uh, but I've, I've gone and done the factory tour. And if my technicians soldered the way that those people solder, I would, we would have some serious training going on. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't say I'd fire them, but we'd have some conversations going on for sure. Yeah, maybe I need to, I mean, I think my installers do a good job. Maybe I, I need to try to, I don't know, try to help. What do you, what do you use for your, uh, your startup process? Like your, um, commissioning. That's what I was, the word I was looking for commissioning. Oh, your equipment uh, commissioning. To be honest, it's, it's nothing. I'm not using like a digital app or anything that like, we really just literally have like paper. Like it's something that they, they go through and we have it built in the house call pro. I thought you were on service Titan for some reason. I was going to tell you, I'd send you the form from service Titan. Um, yeah. HTML code, but, uh, well, I was on service Titan, the last company I was with, okay. but we're, right. we're on house call pro here. And, and trust me, I've, they, uh, Ryan and Amanda get sick of hearing me talk about service Titan. Um, and we were going to make that switch. Um, what you need to do is look into some Sarah. Well, yeah, we, we did. Um, and I've talked to Everett. I just, I guess the reason we didn't jump onto it is because people going from house call pro to Sarah couldn't even do it until after the first of the year. Um, there was a price, was it a price book issue or export import issue or something? It was something when we talked to them was back in like November and they were like, oh, if you're house call pro, like you can sign up now, but you can't even use it until after the first. You can't even like start onboarding until after, you know, January 1, 2022. And it was like, well, that fucking sucks. Um, import Everett just import. on there. He said yeah. it was an import problem. Um, Everett, you're supposed to be at dinner. Yeah. What the hell, man? Um, <laughs> but it, it, it does look awesome. I mean, it, it does look good. 
And, and and I've told Everett this. The only thing is when we talked to Billy, um, you know, it was like, oh, we're going to have this. We're going to have that. And it's like, I I don't know. I don't want to make a decision like that based on things you're going to have, you know, like just because, I mean, House Call Pro did that for the longest time. Oh, we're, we're going to do this. Oh, we're going to compete with uh, Service Titan. You've been saying that shit for years and you haven't done it. They have launched quite a few things. Um that is, is pretty nice. That's things that, um, you know, service Titan has. Um, I just, I don't want to get that decision wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's a, it's a, it's a major, uh, undertaking, I guess is the best way to say it. Like swapping, swapping CRMs is a, is a massive task. Uh, yeah. so it affects everything. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, um, we just finalized Sarah, uh, is, um, sponsoring the service business mastery podcast, which is awesome. That um, is awesome. Yeah. And there's a couple of things like in the next 90 days, the open API, I'm super excited about that. Um, uh, lots of things, efficiency going on and stuff like that. That's so are you using them? Not yet. I'm Congra- still service Titan. Yeah. Congratulations on the sponsorship. Um, that's all. Awesome. Yeah. I, I do think that the, it, it is, um, a very awesome company. And I do think that if we went with one, that would be what it would be. Um, I yeah, just, I, honestly, if you're killing it with house call pro, keep killing it with house call pro. Well, you know? exactly. And uh, that's what, that's, that's really when we had our leadership meeting, that's what it got down to. And that's what Ryan thought. Ryan was like, well, why, do we have to change? You know, like a lot of time Ryan says, if you want to change, then come in here and sell it to me. Like, why should we do it? I couldn't. That's the same thing I do to my guys. I I tell them the same thing. Yeah. You want to, we, we had, we, um, had a couple guys wanting to swap over to a different, uh, coil cleaner. And I was like, all right, sell it to me. Why, why you want to use a different coil cleaner? And, uh, they did, they did. And they convinced me to, to swap. It wasn't very hard because, because Mike, Mike's a buddy of mine. So I I wanted to use it anyways, but, uh, I still made them sell it to me. What are you using? Like Viper? Yeah. 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 We're using Viper now. Oh yeah. That's what we use. I have to bring it in specially though. Oh really? Yeah. The fucking supply houses don't stock. Um, like you can get like. You have a Wasco? No. Wasco uh, dealers, none of the Wasco supply houses. Well, not Wasco. Um, we have like Carrier is owned by Wasco, right? Carrier Enterprise. Yeah. So we have. So we don't have a. We have the Carrier Enterprise. Um, yeah. If you have Carrier Enterprise, they should. They should carry it. They should carry Viper Cool Cleaner. I think they have some of it. Um, Everett Everett said uh, Smart Supply uh, has uh, Viper Cool Cleaner. Oh, do you? Well, that's fine. Well, then <laughs> fucking send me some. Um, so, but um, I have a really good relationship with uh, the local Johnstone by me. And um, they're literally, I can, from my warehouse to theirs, I could throw a rock and hit them. Like, that's how close they are. That's cool. Yeah. And he literally bends over backwards. He doesn't charge me any extra. Like, little things. Like, our shoeby booties we wear, I get orange ones. I don't want blue. Because orange is one that's of our colors. up. Yeah, because yeah. Our, orange is one of our colors and I figure, hey, everybody's doing it. How can we set ourselves apart? So I started getting the orange ones. He doesn't charge me extra. He brings them in and stores them for me. So, um, Dude, I used to get the orange ones, but then they back ordered for like six or eight months. And then we just started using blue ones and just kept, kept using blue ones. That's probably what will happen with me. And I, because around here, you know, a lot of the big boys, more and more people um, are using them you know, booties, they're trying to step their game up. So it's like, how do we set ourselves apart in the market that everybody's trying to do? We'll, we'll do a different color. How about uh floor mats? Y'all use floor mats? We, we haven't. Um, and I've, I special, I've, I special ordered some, I uh, usually have one or two of them laying right here, but they have our logo on it. I mean, they're like 12 or $18 for a floor mat. And it's not a big, big floor mat. It's just big enough for your front door. Uh, and the guys carry two of them with them on the van. So like you, you put one right inside the door and that's what you stand on to put your, your shoe covers on. And then you carry your other one and that's what you lay underneath your tool bag. So when you're messing with a thermostat, you lay it underneath your tool bag. So you're not dropping your tool bag on the ground. 
Oh, nice. So I, I haven't pulled the trigger on that, but I am very big on drop cloths. If you put a ladder up in the customer's house, it better be on top of drop cloth. Um, if you put your That's tools, big. yeah, you put your tools down, it needs to be on a drop cloth. And I give, we give them every one. We give them a, you know, five by five. We give them the four by 10 runners, um, you know, and that's for service and installation. Like my service, service my goes through. Yeah. Our, our install team is amazing. Um, our lead installer, install manager, Dave, like he has those guys, like they, they literally, you will go check on them, me, Ryan, whoever, and we'll walk mm -hmm. and the house is lined. Like you don't see their floor it's covered. So they do an awesome That's job awesome. with that. Um, you know, service, like, have you ever used those, um, those shooby, the, the shooby, uh, the red sticker like, is sticky. Um, but so we, we put it down and it's like, uh, it looks like, like, it looks like saran wrap almost, but it's real, it's real thick. Uh, I haven't used but it. It's, uh, it's, it's not cheap, but it's really cool because especially on stairs. So like you put a drop cloth on the stairs, you know how like you go up and down a couple of times and you about going to bust your butt. But yeah. these things, it, it sticks to the, to each tread. Um, and then protects the floors. So I, I didn't know that Shuby made it, but I, I have like the stuff we get from like the local Home Depot, like the clear stuff. Um, and we have that if we need it, but I don't like using that on carpet. You know, I literally have had a situation where um, the guys had dirty drop cloths and they didn't want to put them in the customer's house. So they just used that. So they made sure it was protected. And when they pulled it up, I guess they pulled dirt with it. So that part of the carpet was cleaner than the other stuff. Oh, that shoot. lady was the <laughs> biggest cunt bag. Um, <laughs> that we had to send a cleaning crew out there to clean her house. Yeah. Like, that sucks, man. That yeah. Really blows. Yeah. So we have, uh, we have what we call the, uh, the clean home guarantee. So we'll, we'll leave your home cleaner than what it is when we get there. Uh, and then sometimes, man, you do something like that. And then all of a sudden you're like, Damn it, man. Now I got to carpet clean the whole damn house. <laughs> and, uh, I got some good friends of mine that do carpet cleaning. So they don't, they don't, they usually take good care of us, but, uh, it's, um, it's definitely one of those things where it's like, man, you can't, can't win for losing on that one. Yeah. We, we have that same guarantee. We do the same thing. We have a whole page of guarantees that we give, um, that when we do the sales That's process, cool. Yeah, we make people sign off on them because we know that nobody else in our area is doing it. You know, they initial That's it. That's awesome. Yep. And it goes into their file. Um, I won't steal that. That was Ryan's idea. Um, but yeah, we, we love. Uh, so I want to say we have, it's probably 10 guarantees. And that's one of the first things that we show to set ourselves apart. Um, yeah, that, that differentiator. <laughs> Yeah. Do, do you carry around like a book that's like your, um, what do you call that? What do we call that thing? I don't know why I'm having a brain fart right now. Uh, like a presentation book? Like, yeah, kind of. But it's like the awards that we've, we've gotten, like the best of Savannah and oh. uh, those, the guarantees, like showing that we guarantee all these things and, um, uh, I can't remember the daggum name of it right now, but, um, so normally I would have it. So we have a book and that's what we first did me and, you know, when we first got here, we still use it. So, you know, it just kind of shows that credibility that, you know, we're licensed that's it right there. The credibility, credibility book. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. So we're licensed, insured, um, yeah, bonded and all that good jazz. Yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff shows them. And we have like, you know, it's like eight pages of five star reviews that you still slowly slip through them, you know, let them all look. And, um, but then we have a designed sales process that, um, you know, um, I helped Ryan, but once again, I will not take the credit from him. Ryan let this be his baby and he built it and it is fucking badass, dude. Like, um, as far as how you, presented to the customer you go into a certain order he has it written down exactly how you say it and you present it to the customer and it's um it's good to how you present like single stage two stage variable speed 
how you go over seer, um, you know, to make sure the customer understands before you move on and you do it in a certain, certain sequence. You know, how it is. If you like, do, do you carry in- that book with, do you carry that book in with you? Yeah. Uh, or does it, or does it feel robotic when you do it that way? No, I mean, I, I take, if, if it's a customer that is like a cold call, it's a sales call that we've never done before, then I will take it in. If it's somebody that knows us or an existing customer, then I won't because I, they obviously they've already experienced it. Yeah, they're sticking with us for a reason. And some of that gets tied into our guarantees. So one of our guarantees is, you know, that everybody works for us. We have no, you know, we don't have any subcontractors. Um, and, you know, God forbid something happens in your home. You don't have to worry about pointing the finger. Um, you're pointing the finger at us because people don't yeah. realize, even if it's a legit company, if they don't have the correct insurances, if that employee gets hurt on your property, guess who's getting you're in trouble? Liable. Exactly. Yep. So we make sure that we do everything so that customer doesn't have that. If my guy gets hurt there, it's our fault. We're going to take care of it. They don't have to worry about it. So, and a lot of customers don't realize that until you bring it up. And they're like, Oh, that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, well, you don't got to worry about it because I'm putting it in writing because if it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. That's how I feel. Yeah, no, I agree with you hundred percent. And there's a lot of people, if you're a business owner and you're listening to this, you may think that you have the insurance to cover it, but you need to make sure you get a proper insurance audit because there's a possibility that you might not actually be covered for something you think you are. Yeah. And that's like here too, we have a MHIC, like a contractor's license too, for the state of Maryland, which you don't need, but we have it anyway. Mm. Um, you know, just so we have every license you could possibly need to operate this business, um, between my stuff and Ryan. I mean, Ryan's, Ryan's got a master's in Maryland, uh, DC, Virginia, and Delaware. So you gotta so, have one in DC too. Uh, we don't. So he got them because he wanted them. Um, we, yeah. we, we only need them in Maryland. I mean, maybe we might grow down the road. You never know. Oh, uh, so if you do work in DC though, you have to have a license in DC. Yeah. Well, if you pull. Oh, permits, okay. So it's like Maryland doesn't count for DC. No. And it's weird. So if you get a Maryland license, um, okay, let me, so if you get, if you get your master's in DC, it will automatically reciprocate to Maryland. You don't even got to take a test, but if you get a master's license in Maryland, you have to go take the test in DC. They give you the finger. It's like, and the test isn't even that much different, but you start getting near Washington DC and you have, um, uh, what's it called? Um, WSC, um, SS. I don't know. There's a certain agency down there that you have to deal with. That's a pain in the dick and Baltimore and DC it is two different worlds. It really is. It's is not, it? it's night and day difference. Um, you can make money down there and do I eventually want to do that? But if we do, that's going to have to be like a whole separate division, you know, like two separate bases. How long, how long of a drive is it for you? Uh, like 25 minutes, 20 minutes is not bad. Yeah. That's, that's how, um, Hilton head is. So Hilton head is right across the river from Savannah and it's South Carolina versus Georgia, but man, it might as well be 200 miles away from it Yeah, because it's, it's so different from Savannah. I went down and saw one of our good customers and I sold him like a 18 seer, like one of the carrier 18 seer infinity inverter heat pumps. Um, he loved it love talking to him. And he was like, Hey man, my, you know, do you go up near DC? I was like, not really. I'm like, we, we do some products, uh, some projects for a custom home builder. I'm like, not always. Why? What's up? He's like, well, my sister's up there. I think she's getting taken advantage of. Um, you know, would you go talk to her? I'm like, yeah, whatever. No, no problem. I go up there. She's like, Gil, I want 14 seer. I know the whole thing. She's like, I'm not going to stay in this house. Um, I just kind of want the bare minimum. So I'm like, all right, well, I know it's DC prices. So I'm going to mark it up a little bit, you know, I, yeah, I you just got your call back and your, tra- your, your travel back and forth to DC. If you got to go there. Well, yeah, I marked up a 14 seer system to like, then it was like 9,800. And she looked at me like I was giving her the fucking thing. She was like, deal. She was like, everybody else like 14, 15 for a uh, 14 seer. I was like, well, fuck, I feel like an asshole. Oh, now. I actually, I forgot to put the air handler in here. Yeah. I was like, you know, what? I, I forgot half the system. So, um, and the best part about that is, you know, um, 
she thought she got a deal, um, which she did. Uh, we put yeah. it in and she literally moved closer to us a year later. Um, and we put a new system in that house. So that's so that, crazy. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's funny. Yeah. It is two, 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 two different worlds. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it up that way. That's why we, when you guys were talking earlier about like, um, I'm trying to think of which podcast you were talking about this one. Um, I think this is when you were on with uh, Evan and Thad um, about having a different company, like another company you can refer things to. So we don't oh, go yeah, into, yeah, yeah. yeah, we don't go into Baltimore city. Um, it just, it, it's a, it's analytics, statistics. It just, it's not profitable for us. Um, you know, now when it, when it's a little bit slower, eh, I'll go in some of the outskirts, um, but we're not going to go inside the city because there's no money. It's too much landlord tenant. Um, you get yeah. there, you do work and it's like, oh man, my landlord answered the phone. Um, like, yeah, you, you, God, you told me you, somebody for that. Yeah. Like nobody said anything about a landlord until it's time to pay for it, you know? Yeah. Um, and then just, let's just be honest, parts of Baltimore are fucking unsafe, you know, and I'm, I'm not gonna have my guys down there, you know, getting shot at. So, um, what's up, James, James Warner. Is that, is that Zeke? Um, if not, sorry. Hello, James. I thought that might, <laughs> might've been Zeke. I know Zeke Warner. And I, I, I want to say that I think James is his real name. Um, or something like that. It is Zeke. What's yeah. up, buddy? Um, yeah, so he, he's um, uh, Maryland. He's like on the, the eastern shore across the Bay Bridge, like where my brother lives. He's a little bit further down. Um, shit, I forgot what I was going to say now. Fucking brain fart. Um, oh, yeah, so we don't go into Baltimore City. So we have a company that we... Um, we give that work to them. We're like, Hey, uh, we don't service your area, but call this company. This is the number. And people are like, Oh, thanks. And then they'll throw us some big projects sometimes. Um, you know, but really I'll, I'll be honest. It's a one site relationship. I don't really need them to give me work. I just want them to take that work. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, I'm just being sometimes honest. That's, yeah. Sometimes that's just as helpful because you, you, if somebody calls you and you're like, sorry about your luck, but we don't service that area. And then the next thing you know, it's like they're giving you bad reviews because you're a jerk on the phone and you wouldn't offer them support. But then you you refer them to somebody and that person did it. But then it's a double edged sword, too, because uh, they do garbage work. And you're like, this person referred me to them and they're like, I'll never trust them again. Blah, blah, blah. So you yeah. gotta make sure it's a good company you refer to. Yeah, they've been. <laughs> Zeke said nobody wants to go into the city. Yeah, it's just not safe, man. It's just, um, I mean, I, I'm fine going around. I mean, but in realistically, you you just got to be careful. Some, you know, I'm not going to send one of my guys there after dark in the middle of the hood, whether they feel comfortable or not. It doesn't matter. It's just it doesn't make sense. Um, and yeah. a lot and a lot of Baltimore City is old steam boilers. Um, most mm. or, or there's oil, and let's be honest, a lot, none of my guys, besides maybe me and one other, um, if not Ryan, um, knows how to work on oil and steam. You know, yeah, most guys can't do steam. Yeah, and you're ultimately you're a risk manager, so you want to you want to manage the risk that the company's involved with in general. Yeah, it's um, you know, and plus the way the roads are in uh, Baltimore, that's why I like front end alignment shops are on every corner because like the roads are messed up. You're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. you know, so you got to get your truck aligned, but um, it, it's not bad. I think this is um, I think that we're in a pretty good market, and it's funny because we have a lot of big. I know you're in a smaller market, but we have a lot of big boys around here. But there's mm -hmm. still like a lot of untapped potential, you know what I mean, for somebody to grow. Because um, there's that customer that they don't want the small guy who they they're afraid is not going to be around, but then they mm -hmm. don't want the big guy either because they mm -hmm. know they're overpriced. They know what happens. So if you can come in and be that middle guy, and it sounds corny when you say it, but it's like you know you want to be big enough to be there when they need you, but small enough to still care. Um, and when That's I true. Yeah, you know? it's cliche, but it's true. Yeah, and when I say that, customers are like, "Ah, oh, that's so." <laughs> um, but it's it's uh, 
It, it is. It, it's the truth. And I think if you find that happy medium, so it, to me, like my hopes and plans for Beltway, I mean, obviously it's not my company, but um, would be rather than to get huge would be to have that in multiple areas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's our, um, that's Julia mine's long-term target is we don't want to do more than 5 million uh, per location, but we want 10 locations doing 5 million each. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And we can do that. We can fly under the radar. We can do that across di- several different metropolitan areas. And, you know, if you can get 700,000 residents or more, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to do than 140,000 residents that we have. So wh- our where would, occupies. So where would you go? Would you, would you like have your like locations, like kind of like one ends here, uh, one starts here, totally different nope. areas, different States. Oh, different States. Yeah. My basically capital cities of each state. Oh, nice. Yeah. Anywhere that's, that's got a, a, a population of over 700,000. You stay the fuck out of Baltimore, right? <laughs> no, I wouldn't come up there. I don't want to go anywhere where it snows because I don't uh, know nothing about the uh, oil or nothing like that. So definitely, definitely. And, uh, and I want to, I mean, honestly, stay under the, the stay at, right at or under the $5 million range. So you're, you're not, you're not taking over enough market share to become a target for any big companies. No, that, that, that makes sense. That's a smart idea. Um, <laughs> Matt Mitchell, dear God, you people listen to this guy. Um, <laughs> I gotta have Matt on man. Matt, and oh, his, Matt. Yeah. Matt and his dad are doing good things up there, man. Trying to, um, they're, they're growing. Um, I was talking to Matt, we were going over some numbers and things like that. And there was a few things he said he didn't understand. And I was like, dude, that's, that's fine. You know what I mean? Like, don't ever be afraid. And I won't go into detail. Um, but, um, I don't understand it either. Yeah. Like that's, what I was trying to say like, dude, there's so many of us that don't didn't know things or don't understand stuff and still learning some things because we fucked up on it. And it's, you know, don't, yeah, don't ever be afraid. Cause the sad part is, you know, how it is, man. A lot of guys don't say something until it's way too late. Oh, I've been guilty of doing that myself. Yeah. It's like, well, damn, you should have called somebody like, you know, <laughs> last year. year. Ago, yeah. You know what? I, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, shit, you, you should probably close the doors and start over, man. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, sh- sh- shit happens. It, it, it was awesome. I don't know if you heard me earlier. It was awesome to finally meet Julie, man. Um, it, it was funny. Like oh, yeah. when I was podcasting and she would come up and she'd be like, you okay? You all right? And I'm like, uh, I, I think so. You know, but I think I'm all right. Now just checking on you. If you yeah. need something, let me know. I'll get it for you. Yeah. I, I was like, did I do something wrong? Did I like a booger in my nose or something? Like, um, no, but yeah, she, you, she's real good about that. She, you, I call her mama bear. That's yeah. what she is. In our you business. tell she's a go getter, man, that she's, you know, she don't let no grass grow under her feet. No. And it's funny too, because there were, uh, there were some people that thought they were impressing her. Um, and she was like, hang on just a second. Let me just stop you right there. I don't care anything about what you just said. I was like, <laughs> Oh shit. Like I want these people to sponsor podcasts. Don't be all mean to them. She was like, I just want to make sure we're clear here. You're not impressing me by showing me how, how much money you're spending on this stuff. <laughs> oh God. Like, well, thank God she didn't say yeah, it okay. to me. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. It was so funny. I was in the middle of, uh, I was interviewing the, uh, VP at Johnson controls and, um, so this vice president and, and we're, me and Josh are sitting at the table interviewing him and this other is a young guy. And he was talking about all these flashy stuff and airplanes and private jets and stuff. And, and she was like, you can just hang on a second. I don't care nothing about none of that. That don't want to impress me. Not even one bit. You want to talk business? We can talk business. But I don't, don't don't think you're gonna impress me with talking about airplanes and stuff. She said, "I'm just gonna let you know that my grandfather, he's the guy who created Ryan Aviation. So most of the the electronics that are inside those airplanes you're talking about, he invented them." And I was like, "Oh shit!" And the guy, the VP <laughs> of Johnson Controls, is like, "Damn, she's feisty." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she is. That's awesome. Good for her. 
<laughs> what the hell did Matt say? He said it's Tersh and Brother Gersh. <laughs> Shut up, Matt. Oh, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Matt. I guess I do need to have a conversation with Craig. I don't think I've ever actually talked to Craig. I've interacted on uh, the internet, but social media, but. Yeah, I think I, we've actually had a conversation. I finally got to meet him in person there. So we went out to dinner um, the first night, and that was uh, that was a good time. That was a really good time. I, matter of fact, I think that was the best meal that I had there. It was like, uh, what was that called? Uh, Carlos and Charlie. It's kind of a goofy fucking name, but um, fajitas and shit. It was actually really good. Was it? Yeah, it was really good, dude. I'll tell you one thing about Vegas. Growing up, like I've only been to Vegas twice and both times were in the past six months, <laughs> but my entire life, all I've heard was how cheap the food is and how cheap the hotels are. That's a friggin' lie. Yeah. It was that cheap. food is expensive. Dude, like, I went to get a pack of cigarettes and two five hour energies. In, um, inside the hotel. Dude, it was 20 bucks for a pack of cigarettes and they want like eight fifty for a five hour energy. I was like, man, you can kiss my ass. I thought she was joking <laughs> with me. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I was like, I, I do need a cigarette every so often. I was like, but or no, actually, we I didn't get the five hour energies, but me and uh, Rookie bought the cigarettes because we had no choice at the time. Um, yeah, it sucked. What do you say? That's funny. I thought that was a lie. I don't know what he meant. Burn. <laughs> um, so, but shit, man, we almost went 45 minutes over and I know you've been going all day, buddy. I won't keep you too long. Um, let me see if this thing is on real fast so that I can, um, let you oh, yeah. guys know. Yeah. Here, I'm going to show you guys this real fast. Um, oh, let me do the single screen. So, uh, wrong one. God damn it. There we go. Guys, I have a giveaway coming up. Um, I have this, uh, another one of those Subco YS100 uh, Wi-Fi inspection cameras. And I have one of the new Klein HVAC meters to give away. I have a lot of stuff coming in for giveaways, just so you know. Um, some stuff that's going to be pretty awesome that I think you guys are going to like. Um, more stuff from Klein. Um I got some Makita stuff coming in, some Yellow Jacket stuff coming in. Um, so what I want you to do in order to like this, so you do something for me, I do something for you. Uh, I want you to make sure that you are subscribed on YouTube, you follow me on Instagram, and then that you are a follower on Facebook. Um, like the Facebook page and be part of HVAC on Censored Nation. All four. I want you to text me a picture with your name and it has all of the, um, you know, a picture of uh, proving that you're subscribed to all four of those places um, to the number. And I'll, I'll put it up on the screen here, the podcast number which is going to be 443-422-1000. That's 443-422-1000. And I will make posts and put it out about it. Um, so I will pick two winners. Um, and then you guys will uh, win one of these prizes and I'll get it shipped out to you. Um, you guys can see, I'm going to start doing more stuff on this board, showing off different things. Let me zoom out a little bit. You guys can see showing love to my friends over there, Mr. Tersh and the, Oh yeah. Service business mastery podcast is up there. Um, let me switch this camera back and go back over here. Um, so yes, uh, make sure that you like on all platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, so Facebook group, uncensored nation and the podcast page. If you can like that, review it. Um, like I said, all that would literally take you under 10 minutes. And you can win yourself some nice prizes. Um, Tersh, what size, like, like polo shirt, what size polo shirt would you wear? Uh, extra large, large, extra large, something like that. Dude, I will send you this, man. Um, yeah, bro. Yellow, I have a yellow jacket polo shirt. Um, uh, they're like the Nike dry fits. Oh yeah. This is the most comfortable fucking shirt I've ever worn in my life. Like I've tried to buy like regular <laughs> shirts like that, but they don't feel the same. Um, and I have one extra large left, so I'll, I'll send it to you. So That's somebody dope. else can yeah, wear man. it. Yeah. 
Um, I appreciate that, man. <laughs> yeah, of course, buddy. So obviously it was awesome. Awesome seeing you, man. I, I know it's the yeah, hustle and buzzle was always, always biz, uh, always busy when we're at these shows. Um, let me know if some of these other shows are doing having podcasters, you know, cause I'll, I'll try okay. to make it, make it happen and try to be there. I, I want to be at more than AHR yeah, cause I'm going to start buying my little kit like you have. Cause I want to start doing <laughs> some, some things around I found here. A, I found a lot of stuff that I don't want to take to the next show. Like, uh, definitely we'll be not taking the roadcaster pro and definitely just taking the, the, um, the zoom, the zoom. Yeah. The zo- that thing, I-, I was editing some shows today and, uh, the, the sound quality's spot on with it. Yeah. So and you perfect. said there's still buttons to play your, um, what you call it, right? Yeah. You got four instead of having eight of them, you have four of them. And I don't ever use all eight anyway. I'm I'm filling I don't up either. I'm filling up dumb shit like like this thing, like you know, like dumb stuff. Uh that I don't I I, I always <laughs> say I'm I'm gonna use the wah, 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 and I don't ever do. Um so Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, I'm gonna have to Unless try I that tell out. The jokes and I, I use a crocus. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's usually funny. what I get when I tell a joke. <laughs> I did a giveaway one time and I gave people free tickets to my OnlyFans and Apparently that's why they shut my Facebook group down. I was like, fuck, okay. <laughs> oh, well, it happens, I guess. People didn't want to see a bald, <laughs> bald gill naked. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah. Yeah. G- Mike, good night. It was great. It was great seeing you, Mike. Uh, yes. Good night, sir. Yes. Good night, Mike. Hey, Mike, I'm going to message you, man. Um, it, like I said, I would, I would love to have you on, on the show boss, um, to be able to talk to you, um, or I'll do something with you, whatever you want to do. I would definitely love to link up with you, man. Um, Thank all you guys in the, uh, in the chat. Um, it was all YouTube. I don't know what happened with Facebook tonight. I don't think that it, I don't think it went into Facebook. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, it, whatever. doesn't really matter. I don't really care. It is what it is. Um, <laughs> you know, cause to, to be honest, I, I'm going to start probably doing these. I'm going to keep doing them like this and eventually go back just to, to YouTube. I don't know. I just think YouTube's a better platform to do this on. Um, Facebook's already got their one finger in my ass. I don't want to give them a reason to stick the whole fan up there. So, right, um, right. yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Cause it's, it has the, it has the alert that I put in there, but when you click on it, it, it doesn't actually have the link. So whatever, I'll worry about that another time. Uh, Cool. Thank you, well, I appreciate you you hanging out with me. Yes. Thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Um, and we'll talk soon, my man. Yeah, buddy. I'll see you later. All right, brother. See you. See you, bud. All right, everyone. I'm going to shut this thing down, man. Thank you guys um, for all of you that I met in, in Vegas, like Ryan, um, you know, Jessica and Craig, uh, Mike, HVAC reefer guy. Um awesome time. It was so nice to meet you guys in person. Finally. Um, it was a really, really good time. Let me do this one. So the sponsors get some love. Um, uh, it was a really, really good time. So thank you guys. I really do appreciate your support. So normally I will be here every Wednesday night at 8 PM. I moved it back to, um, seven tonight because Everett had to go to a dinner. So that's the only reason was at seven. Otherwise every Wednesday night, 8 PM Eastern standard time, I will be here with this microphone in front of me talking about something. I do have some really, really good guests lined up. Um, you know, I have Mr. Joe Casera coming up, um, booked later on next month. I have some of the women in HVACR coming up. Uh, yeah, some really, really good guests. Um, so anyway, uh, if you guys want to win the prizes, I will put that in there again. So you guys know I'll put them on each of the platforms. So you guys know how to do it, but, um, I'm going to stop running my mouth. Um, I love you guys, man. I appreciate you. Have a good week. Um, remember always be the best version of me, man. You know me. I want you guys to always be safe. Always make it home the same way you left. Always do the little thing. Set yourself apart from the next person. All right. And I, the ones that I know, I know you do that. All right. Until then, I will, uh, I'll talk at you mofos later. All right. Peace. Hey, that's fine, Ryan. Win it, buddy. Gotta make sure I know what button I'm pressing. There we go. <laughs> 
Don't be afraid to contact us with any questions. Yes, yeah, that's, that's not it. Hold on. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast and being the best part of HVAC Uncensored Nation. Remember to follow us on social media sites to stay up to date on the latest content and giveaways. Now, get back to work and shut this mother f- down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored Podcast may not be the same as the sponsors or guests. Before I end it, if you guys are still there, that's a new one that was made. This is the old one. I think I like my old one better. Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram or email us anytime at HVACUncensored at gmail.com. Now get back to work. Shut this down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored Podcast may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors or guests. I like the old one. All right. I'm out. See everybody. Have a good night.